What's Up Witches, and welcome to Witch Space. I'm Gemini. And I'm Scorpio, and we are Witch Space Podcasts. If you haven't seen us before, we come out on the new and full moon. You can hear an episode. We have been fortunate enough to have been invited by Amy several times to participate in the Moon, Serpent, and Bone virtual markets, and we're so excited to be here for the Yule one. Thank you so much, Amy, for including us in this, and we're really excited to get to bring you our ideas for this market. So Scorpio, what are we doing today? Well, today we are going to do quick and easy spells to witch your way into the new year. Now, this is one of two parts. So basically, this is the first part, but if you like what you see, check us out, because part two is going to come out in the full moon episode of Witch Space. Let's jump right in. For my two spells, I wanted to utilize things that might be seen as leftovers after a holiday party or after somebody gives you a gift. Especially this year when we're not really going to see our loved ones, we're expecting a lot of holiday cards and I'm sure that some of us have family members who are not pagan, whether they celebrate Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, or some other winter holiday, we get a lot of cards. And they're really sweet. Happy holidays from a beloved family member, that's so kind. We can use these cards to actually create spells to bless the people who have sent them. If you're going to use words, you would write your spell on the back. I typically use protective sigils. So I would draw my sigil here, typically trying to bring good fortune and positive energy. You can then hang these cards around your house, maybe on a fireplace or on a cute, um, they have like those little clothespin lines, and this will charge them with the holiday spirit that you build during Yule. Then if you'd like to store them or burn them, it releases the blessing that you've put on the back of the card. Now, the other thing that we have often during the holidays is leftover wrappings. So I like to take wrapping paper, stuffing, ribbon, even like pieces of confetti from gifts that loved ones have given me and put them in a joy jar. And I build my joy jar during the holiday season to help maintain that sense of joy and love throughout the year. So I will stuff it full of all of my wrappings. Up with poppy seeds for peace. I like to include glitter because I think that it brings joy and happiness when I see it. And I put a piece of rose quartz inside to help bring love and positive energy. I will then put the top on my joy jar and light a small candle to seal the jar. I personally don't like to actually seal the lid of the jar completely because then I can empty it out and reuse it each year. And I like to just melt the bottom of the candle to help it to stick. For you words witches like Scorpio, you could then say a spell. But I typically allow the candle to do its own work. I think using the joy jar and blessing the cards that you get for the holidays really brings a sense of witchcraft and magic to a holiday that a lot of us kind of get grandfathered into celebrating because of our non-pagan relatives. So this is a really great way to make me feel connected to my loved ones while also feeling connected to my practice and helps me to bring positive energy into the year by blessing my loved ones and also creating this joy jar that allows me to look back on the positive energy of the holiday season. So I'm here to talk today about, who am I kidding? These are fake. But actually, it's a good idea to have some of the plants that we associate with Christmas for your Yule celebrations. Some of them include holly, for instance. Holly is a great protector. So even if you don't celebrate the holidays, having a little bit of holly in your home is great to protect 
your home and everybody in it. The next thing that people usually associate with Christmas is mistletoe. And yes, it does have a background and past associated with prosperity and fertility. But did you know that it also aids in peacemaking and ending discord? Actually, not a bad thing this time of year. True, our gatherings might be smaller, but you never know when family drama might strike. So why not have some mistletoe around the house? Oh, hey, what are you doing outside my house? Oh, I know, you wanna know how to ensure like good travel in 2021? Cause we basically haven't gone anywhere. So what I like to do on New Year's Eve is that I get my overnight bag and I put it outside my house. I just plop it down. New Year's Day, first thing I do is I come out, I grab it and I put it inside. Does it have to be a bag? Absolutely not. Let's say you don't wanna put your bag out. Maybe you live in an apartment and it would just look weird or maybe you get taken. So I have a book. Where do I really wanna go? I would love to go to the Basque region of Spain and check out the caves of Zugaramurdi and the legends of the witches there. So maybe I'll just leave my book of La Bruja de Sugaramurdi by the door. And it does the same thing. It's whatever your intention is, what you put into it, the travel symbolizes for you, leave it outside your door the night before and bring it in with you. And hopefully it'll happen. So thank you, Amy for inviting us one more time, because this was a lot of fun to record. We hope that you have a great rest of 2020 and a very magical 2021. And hopefully these spells will be helpful to you going forward for the rest of the year. If you want some more spells to witch your way into the new year, part two of this will come out on December 29th on our podcast. So we'd love for you to come join us there and hear the other spells that we have ready for you. And remember, if you're following the moons, you're following us.